Hello, everyone, and welcome back to round one, back nine coverage of the 2022 True, Bo True Bank Des Moines Challenge presented by Discraft. I'm Jeremy Colling, joined to my left by you, Paul Uliberry. Mm -hmm. And we have a pretty special card. Mm -hmm. Super special. Yeah. But they need to get on it because we yeah. have two two unders, one under, and an even par from Caleb Visky. You can see that tied 74th up there by Caleb Visky's name. He needs to get on it mm -hmm. because we have a bunch of six unders. Well, only two, but a bunch of five unders, which is basically yes. a six under. Basically. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Gannon coming in here with a lot of expectations being the one of the local hometown hero guys. A lot of expectations for him the way he's been playing this season and back here on a track that he helped design as we look at hole 10 par 5 844 feet this is the simplest hole in the course you want to get a hyzer off the tee and play your second shot to the bottom of the hill pushing the left side ob from there it's a short pitch across this ob ditch to a green that's protected by all sides with ob but the tee shot just really requires a shot just like this that calvin's thrown Pretty simple. This is one you are certainly not feeling good with a par. And if you happen to take a bogey, you're really, really not feeling good. But the wind coming from right to left is certainly not making things easy. That being said, that tee shot hitting those trees does not take Gannon out of birdie position. No. This is the got to be the easiest it one, is. of course. Which is interesting because back in the day, say... 2008 to 2011, mm -hmm. this was one of the hardest holes in the world. I remember. People were taking, like, big, big numbers on it. Now it's the easiest hole. Yeah, 4.28 average. I mean, it's we rarely see a, a hole average of 0.2, nearly 0.8 under a par. That's, yeah. That puts it under the must-get category. And the 580 par 3 was a par 4 back then. It was a little farther, but not much. Oh, really? Hole 8? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, with Gannon's second shot, that he's fine. He, he'll have a forehand approach down the hill. Don't know what's going on right there. Maybe keeping his hand warm. It's a little chilly still maybe out. In yeah, the it is a little, a little cold. That's a perfect layup. Gale wants to push that left side so he can throw that turnover in there. Just another hyzer for Brody. The trick can be going too far left can certainly come up quick on you, but if you also get pinched off on the right side down there, you essentially have no real look. I think Brody wishes that was pushed a little bit farther to the left. This, oh. oh, it's flipping the right way. That sits right there. You can't really put it in a better spot. It is potentially attackable in two to try to go for the eagle, but when the wind is up, not the play to go for, especially considering what you're risking. You called it. Cannon still in position for birdie. Okay, well, the flippy putter. Nose up. Oh, this is turned over a little bit sharp. It's going to be going through some limbs if it's going to get to the green, and it does safely. But Kale certainly missed his line there and is fortunate that it did not hit that branch that overhangs the out-of-bounds creek. This is a little tight. I think that was money. Okay. It had to be tight. Yeah, had to had to be tight. Go wide, the ceiling is actually lower. Yeah, like a little gap there. Yep. And Calvin parks that one with the Toro. He'll have an easy birdie. Kale draws air on his birdie look. Hard thing to do, missing it right side with that tree obstructing the right side of the basket. But nonetheless, he'll have a he'll have to settle for a par, whereas. Gannon takes the birdie, and so will Brody and Calvin. It's like weird kudos to Kale. So we just did there. We 
hard thing to do missing it all right there, buddy. It is. I hate I hate when that happens. You're yeah. thinking to yourself, there's no, no I way you. if I if I just get this un- turned over, there's no way I miss it right. And then you do, and you're like, didn't think that was possible. Kale this season has switched up his putt. He was a traditional push putter forever and decided that he was going to go all spin this year. As we move from the hard easiest hole on the course to the hardest hole 11 par 4 721 feet. This is the perfect landing zone if you can get there. From there it's a dog leg left up to the hill. 4.2 average. The hole was about 75 feet longer last year and averaged 4.75. So that shortened T position does make this hole considerably more gettable for the birdie. Perfect pace control for Calvin right in the middle. Brody looking up here. Oh, no. Up oh through. Wow. Worked out. Were you going high? I actually first round tried laying up with like nearly a jump putt and tried going around hyzer over top of everything. Mm. So throwing my second shot from the top of the hill. How'd that work? Um Gannon spike hyzers into the fairway. <laughs> Are you serious? You laid up? Yeah, I, I did it in practice and had a bullseye hit, and I was like, you know what? Let's do it in this tournament. And then, uh, wow, look at this drive from Kale. Are you kidding me? That is the best drive I've seen in the hole. Yeah, I think you're right. Wow, look at that thing. Lift at the right time, carry, angle, result, even the roll. Every part of that shot is perfect. Good thing those people got out of the way. Just a tight shoot up the gap here for Calvin. This is like Calvin's bread and butter, so no problem. Just slow down. He's perfectly in between last year's pin and this year's pin. Yeah. Sidearm rollies. Yeah, tight left, that's not a bad play. I, I like this if it's not too understable. The problem is a lot of times players think they need to go more understable than they need to carry it long. But wrapping back up the hill also forces you to go understable. That was the fastest flagger I've ever seen. Like one of those tennis kids. Wow, that was a really good-looking shot with some bad breaks for Brody. Just a bit too high, but... Good angle. It's going to come up short. I bet we can guess where this is going. Yeah, that's very well played for Kale. If he can convert on the birdie here, it certainly makes the par in the last hole not feel so bad. A little early out of the hand there for Brody. I'll leave a little extra for him. This is tough, especially with the... Man, it makes it look pretty easy, but yeah. that's hard with that left to right cross. Good angle control. Got to watch out on this hillside. That koozie is producing rollers left and right, and it usually does not want to stop rolling. And I see... Oh, that's fine. Yep. That is going to really, really sting after that perfect drive. Kale is in danger of a bogey. He's going to have to make one from deep C2. And good angle there to really see how severe that slope is. It is very punishing if you're not making your putt on the screen. A little putt there, cleaning it up for Brody. All right, still nothing really going. I know. Calvin is 
Doing all right. Brody okay there. Actually, Brody, that was a really good par putt considering his approach after the failed second shot really didn't get him that close. Mm -hmm. And for Kale to turn that birdie into a bogey, that really hurts at this part of the round. Old 12, par 3, 260, double Mando, low ceiling in here. Then you want to go right over the top of this uh, little rock fixture. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, it's going to be a pretty easy hole for you. There is out of bounds at the bottom as well. And if you go long, there's there are some, uh, some trees that can make putting on this green quite tricky. Ooh, one to beat. And it's not 260. I don't know why it says that. It's it's actually like 315, nearly 320. Yeah, that makes sense. Not really sure how they got that distance. But look at that little helpful tree direction for Brody. Yep. That was hyzering down towards the out-of-bounds area. Yeah, double help. I'd heard that Gannon was the reason they put the rocks there. He wanted to create a little bunker for people if they went too low. Always fun to play your holes that you help design in big competition. Look at that fun line from Kale, the air bounce Anheuser. Talk about the rocks and there are the rocks. Yeah, you talked about the rollaway. There was a rollaway. Talk about the rocks. You're really messing Kale up here. I don't know, but watch this big putt that Gannon makes. Oh, it's only when Kale does it. Dang it. Oh, it's only when Kale does it. Yeah, you oh. only have power over Kale. Here's Calvin with a long, about 52 feet. He's going to make it. <laughs> Wait a second. And I have power over Calvin. That's a beautiful stroke right here. On the last Buttery. second, he swings that arm. Get in there. Mm -hmm. It listened. Second easiest hole in the course, Calvin. Picking Is it? up, yep. This one feels like yeah. a must get after yeah, you're playing 11, you know. Oh, he actually did get over the rocks there. Just a bit, and Kale delivers the birdie putt. And my definition of must get is a little bit different than Matt Polson's, who picked up the hole in one in the first round. So another round with a couple of starting round one aces, just like last week at Ledgestone. It's awesome. It's in the air. You know what? Ricky donates $1,000 an ace on the Elite Series. Ricky Four. does? Ricky does to his foundation. That's awesome. Hi, my name is Jesse from Trash Panda, and over the past few months, we've been working with Jomez Pro on a new podcast called Patent Pending where it's my job to discover the untold stories of innovation in disc golf. Like, how are a couple of friends in Denmark changing the way we think about disc design? Or why did Jonathan Gomez almost quit disc golf altogether? So join me as we explore the unheard stories in disc golf and interview the change makers we don't even know exist yet. I will definitely be checking that out. That sounds very interesting. Mm -hmm. As we look at hole 13, a brand new hole here at Pickard. Par 3, 333. All the threes are happening here. Hopefully not on the scorecard, though. Got to make this tight gap and turn right. Very narrow fairway. And there is out of bounds right and long on this pin as we look at the elevated basket. You can see the wow. wind is definitely becoming a factor. Ooh, a little deep, but that's pretty good. I don't know how you can really throw the backhand much better going down the fairway. Like, we saw Drew in the practice round hit the base, but he kind of cut the corner early. Brody's going high. Mike Heiser. And it plinkos inside the circle. That's a good shot, good result. Is that what you do? No, I, I try to go down the middle. I, I, I see a middle gap. I try to hit it. I'm a simple man. And this is drifting left. It's really, you have to have something so understable in your bag to get it to really keep moving right with the backhand. Gannon. 
and just just a bit off right now. This is in danger. Oh, it's getting that late skip. My goodness, he really likes going super overstable with the forehand. That was an awesome shot right there. Mm-hmm. Had me fooled for a minute. Wow. Does not look good. No, it doesn't. Oh no. And is that out of bounds? No. Brody just keeps moving up, down to five under now. Plugging away for sure. Five under through 13 holes with two bogeys. Just getting a lot of birdies in that scorecard. This course has a ton of birdies out there to get, even though our card's not necessarily getting a lot of them. This feels like one of those courses where 11 to 12 feels like it should be around the hot round every yep. round. Full 14 par 4, 720 feet down this hill. Out of bounds is where this creek lies, where you take that bridge over. Through a tight little corridor up into the flat spot. If you do throw the hyzer, you got to be careful of drifting left into the woods. It makes it a Approach really tricky, and of course, turning it over into the right hand side. Now Brody is going to go forehand spike hyzer. This is looking like it's going to be too far to the right, and I don't think he's going to have much for that second shot. But I don't dislike that play to just to get yourself in position to look at the tunnel. This shot requires a very straight finish. Calvin going with a rock three in order to avoid the late skip into the thick stuff, and he's got a pretty decent result. I like this line a lot. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this width, putting him on the right side of the fairway, opening up another backhand approach, well thrown. Kale going FX3, and you're going to see here why that fairway driver play can kind of difficult. That's moving really hard left, and from there, I don't think he has much. But he's going big anyways. Spike Heiser. And is that, oh, wow, okay. So he's Pretty got a good. C2 look. Yeah, that's really good. Great result. Wow, that is awesome. Okay. Okay, that's nearly, that's worth rewarding with world-class level shot. Back to the basket from 340. Oh, again. I'm glad that they knew. Oh, yeah. This is freaking tough. What control. What accuracy from the standstill. Courage. Yeah, that takes a ton of courage to throw that. And even Calvin with a good tee shot, he's looking at the over-the-top hyzer. That's spiking in backside of just outside C1. And Gannon's actually going to go with a forehand second shot. And this is pushed. <sighs> Wrong again, Jeremy. I thought that was... That thing's stable, Jeremy. It's stable. It's stable, Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy, it's most stable. It's very stable. It looked like it was going to hit the trees on the left side. Come on. Did you think that was pushed too far left? It's stable. It's very overstable. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, stable disc. Come on, Cal. Yep. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Cal? <laughs> Great putt from Calvheim. No, I... 
I wasn't mad, but I'm just saying, like, oh. I kind of called it again. To get the oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. I call him Calv all the time. Broads with a nice bird. Gans. Gans, man. Gans a stroke on the course with a very overstable approach sidearm. And Kale's going to be losing a stroke to the card again here. As we look at hole 15, this par 4 is 600 feet and it dog legs to the left right here. The play is to get a hyzer to the top of that hill and set yourself up for a very tricky second shot. They're out of there is out of bounds on the right side of the fairway. And everything is just sloping left. Getting your disc to land flat is key, but it is not easy to do. This has a chance to skip straight. Okay, that's nice. That would be a, I think it might be a tough second shot though. Oh yeah, but it, he's going to be. It's not out of, bound, out of the up. bounds. Out of the bounds, and I don't think Calvin's going to be out of the bounds either going to be out of the gaps out of the gap for sure looking probably in the 340 range to the pin Gannon pushing that a little bit higher and it's going to move him down the hill a bit more left which will open up more of a hyzer angle approach on the second which is what you really want here mm -hmm. this is a zoomer and Kale will be in a similar neighborhood. This can be very tricky. You can see that wind really picking up and didn't quite fully commit to the release point, and that could be in some trouble. Go. Sit. Go. Kale asking for it to sit. Man, he is one of the best in the world at matching angle. A really nice shot. And that one gets kind of filtering. This is high, but it might take him to a bad place. Yeah, just didn't quite get the forward momentum that it needed. Let's see what Brody's left with here from the woods. Surprised we can even see him, it's honestly, that you can really find a bad spot. Good approach from there. Almost dunked it. Zip this bad boy. Oh, I guess he found a little window. If you wanted him to make it, why don't you just say Calvin makes his putt? I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. But you can control him as we have discussed. Gannon with a nice putt from the woods. He is the only player that can control him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Cal's going to make this. Oh. I knew it. Good at your job. I mean, I did jinx him twice this round already, so I kind of feel like I I owed him one. That's that's nice of you. Mm -hmm. Of yes. Wow, not Hi. the comeback putt you won. As you can see, that was into the headwind, but Calvin drills it, and onto the pesky little par three hole 16, 315 feet. And holding up cross up right now. Holding up, what you're holding up a, oh, a cross for what? For good luck or for... To keep the evil away. Keep the evil <laughs> away. Yeah, this this hole is very difficult to land it on the green. If you do miss the trees that are down the fairway and get down there, it's really difficult to have the brakes as well as Gannon has just... Well, called it wrong again, Jeremy. I thought he early released it, but that's a little early, I suppose. This is like a whole kale eats for breakfast. Perfect angle. Missed the trees. 
and Cheerios. Oh, no, Obi. No, nope, safe. So you have to be a little bit left of the basket to be out of bounds. And if you're straight, you can find that little ledge where it's safe. This looks great. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's, the, that's, a, that's where you go out of bounds. Just left of the pin. I mean, that's... Evil, man. That's truly evil because you are landing the disc essentially within 20 feet of the pin on this blind shot, and you're out of bounds. Not much wiggle room. Oh, there's some wiggle room. Evil. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I thought you held up the cross. Oh. Imagine what would happen if I didn't. Whoa. <laughs> the good point. Again, giving it a good bid. Very scary to run it from anything up the hill. You know Calvin's going to give this a go. Wow, huge <laughs> hit. That's a frustration knockdown. Beautiful putt again. From that range, he's been really good this round. Yeah, he has. I mean, this decade, he's been really good at that range. He does some have some tournaments where he will come up short from that range, and then he'll have some stretches of the year where he'll just be knocking down 50, 60 footers, no problem. That's a good birdie. Getting back to under par for Kale. Bummer, Brody. I was to go to seven under. Still throwing the disc very well. Scrambling well, making decent putts. Not a bad round right now for Brody. As we look at hole 17, par three, 235 feet, and it's just right there in front of you, but it's so hard to reach and grab it. It's just, you can throw the backhand putter, maybe mid range. You can throw the forehand turnover, I, although I don't think anyone in this group will do that. Just. Look at that flip at the very right. Oh, my gosh. That was. That flips just a moment later. It's hitting that tree and going into the woods. Oh, no. I've been over there. It's tough. If and there's no putts. Yeah. If you've played this course a few times, you've probably been in there. Look at that. I mean, I have just. Littered with incorrect calls. Another forehand on this on this card. Didn't think that we'd see the two of them. That's for sure. How about three? Nice forehand from Calvin. <laughs> ah. Drifting a bit right with the rock. If you asked him, he would, and you said, "I'll give you one more shot for free, but you have to throw a forehand." He'd take it. That round. I think you're right. Oh. Calvin's forehand's good. Tricky. Oh, of course, yeah. Not going to find a lot of things this kid Calvin's bad at. The piano? I wouldn't doubt if he was, like, just an absolute master of the piano. Just tickling the ivory all the time. Ooh. Gannon drilling in. Talk about tickling the ivory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I like it. Brody, to get to seven. Well done. And that was a really, really good drive. That had really yeah. no chance of hitting any of those trees up the gut the whole way through. And anytime you just go down the middle in this hole, it feels so good because those trees, as you can see, really really penalize an errant tee shot. It'll get freaky up the middle. I believe Paige and I will do whatever it takes. We have five world titles, but that's not where we want to settle. We don't want to settle with five. We want more. We would practice 24 hours a day if that's what it meant to win the world championship. You know, we're willing to do that. We're willing to sacrifice so much because we've already sacrificed so much, you know, to get the fifth. But we'll sacrifice more to get the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth. We have that same mindset, and, and we're just going to continue to to push and push and push and push. An interesting fact I heard about Brody this round, when he was throwing his onyx. Full 
Vultures. Vultures. He was calling them Get Sneakies instead of Get Freaky Zone. I like that. It's, a, it's funny stuff. It's disc golf comedy. Holy team, Paul. That's a par five. 1,080 feet, out of bounds all the way down the left-hand side, and then trees kind of everywhere. You're teeing off uphill on a up. But the tee the tea pad is actually sloped yeah. uphill too, which makes it tough to get a lot of power. A couple trees right in the middle. Just basically throw as hard as you can, miss a couple trees. There's Crush one, it. On your second shot, there's one bush right in the landing yep. zone. If you can get past that or around that. Loving it. Loving life. Life is good, though. I'll tell you. Not going to hear any complaints from this guy. Brody's looking at an opportunity to get to eight under. A very good round if he can get a birdie here on the 18th. Gannon's just been, you know, four under doesn't really show. I mean, that shows how good he is because he's kind of been off all round and he's still at four under. Yeah. And it's tough. Like this, these conditions, there's people out on the course, really good players who are over par right now. That was a big shot from Brody. Or was that Calvin? That was Calvin, that was Calvin excuse yeah. me, sorry. Missed that call. Yeah, well, I'm a bit off today, Cal. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> oh, boy. Turn this thing over, and all of a sudden, what's on the right? Woods on the right. Not a good place to be. You really can't advance much towards the pin if you get more than four or five feet into that right side wood line. Oh, oh wow. Buddy. And this is looking like the conditions are maybe the worst now than they've been. Oh, all. yeah. This is looking pretty brutal up here. And look at how I many Calvin's. Halo Destroyer is getting turned over. That tells you everything you need to know right there. Oh, and he, get pa he gets past the bush there that we were talking about. Yeah, that's the one you want to somehow find a way around on your second shot. What is thinking Heiser? I don't know. Hard to say from there. I I think he'd like to be about 40 feet left. Okay. That approach angle looks a bit sawed off. And this one's going to be really tricky as well. There is a backdoor alleyway up the right side of that tree. Don't know if he found the alley or not. Right out of the hand. Showing why this is actually tied with hole 11 as the hardest hole in the course at a 5-2 average. This is a tough one. And Calvin full sending this approach. This is beautiful. <laughs> Making up for the errant escape shot on his third. And I don't know. Yeah, this is not turned over for Kale, and it's going to be a bad finish. Brody's got a tough little line here. Over OB the whole way, and the horrible rollback up the hill, off the tree, out of bounds. A really good shot that just was penalized. At the very end, that's an unfortunate break. And look at Gannon having to go 40 feet backwards. This needs to get Sit down. Sit down. Wow. It's good breaks right there. Hale, great effort trying to save the par, I believe. Or maybe that was to save the bogey.
Man, this last last hole really costing our feature group. Well, you said it yourself. It is the hardest hole in the course, mm -hmm. tied with, but still. Playing as the hardest hole, you see why. Look at those banners back there. I mean, it is breezy. And it showed its teeth to this feature group. And he's oh. not done. Wow. Whoa. Over the rim and in. Gannon finishing at three under. Brody six under. The double bogey for Kale is going to take him to even. You know he's frustrated, but he is a sport. Acknowledges the crowd as Calvin taps in his bogey. And look at those final scores. Brody, not a bad round. Tied for 27, but that's the best on our card. Even Calvin in 40. Fourth place, but we talked about it in the front nine. Matt Oram with the hot round from yesterday and Friday. This round being played Saturday morning to catch up for the postponed round one. 11 under, couple of tens, some really hot scores to try to compete with the rounds that were played in, frankly, completely different conditions. Oh, yeah, completely calm out there. Mm hmm. Well, that's going to do it for round one here in Indianola, Iowa for the 2022 True Bank Des Moines Challenge presented by Discraft. We've got round two action coming right up with a completely different group. Deuces. We'll see you then. Thank you.